you know, there's a there's a, a lot of more models they went through. But in all the models that I've gone through with you, we haven't talked about any numbers. You see, so I, I went through all this stuff about it being a great investment. We haven't talked about numbers really. And so now I'll just go through some numbers, but none of these numbers need a spreadsheet. They're kind of um, uh, very, uh, very simplistic numbers. So the way the Coke model works is the Coca Cola company produces concentrate and syrup. So let's go back to the point where there's just one product, which is Coca Cola. We won't go through the 100 brands they have right now, but let's say there's only one product, Coca Cola. They produce concentrate and syrup. The syrup gets sold to bottlers around the world, and, and the bottlers then produce the Coke cans and bottles that you see in supermarkets and everywhere else. And the the Coke company uh, also sells uh, the the syrup to various fountain operators, so like Burger King and McDonald's and so on, where you can buy fountain drinks. Uh, so there are two models, right? So there's the bottling model, and then there's the fountain model, and um, or let's say a restaurant and such. So so the way the bottling uh, model works is. The Coca Cola company does not set the price of a bottle of Coke. It lets the bottler do that. Uh, so they can pretty much set whatever price they want. What it does do is it sets the price for the syrup. And what it does do, just like Warren did on January 1st with C's Candy, is on January 1st they bump the price of the syrup nonstop and been doing it for 100 years. And um, and so the the simple economics is that if you have a can of Coke on sale at Costco or wherever, you might get it for about twenty five cents. You know, twelve ounce can. The the twenty five cents the Coca Cola company gets around uh, six cents, six or seven cents of that comes to the Coca Cola, Coca -Cola company for the syrup, and the rest of the let's say eighteen cents or so is shared between the retail outlet that sells it and the bottling operation that produces it. And um, so the bottlers is where a large amount of the capex is happening, right? Because they've got all these bottling plants, they've got all these trucks, they've got drivers, they've got all the distribution going on. The Coca-Cola company just needs a few plants around the world to produce syrup. So and the number of people they need to do that. So when when Warren and Charlie were going to make, going to make the investment, the Coca Cola company had seventeen thousand employees. All the bottlers had half a million. So the capex is on the bottlers, and uh, so so this is uh, C's candy on steroids uh, because you don't have any retail. Um, you know, it's kind of like it reminded me uh, one time I was visiting Microsoft. Uh, I think this was like probably 15 years ago, and uh, you know they 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 used to sell their operating system to, for example, Dell. So Dell would install Windows on all the uh, all the machines. So I I I was talking to one of the Microsoft engineers. I said so I said so do you guys like uh, sell send the uh, the CDs uh, to um, to Dell, and then they, you know, when you buy the computer, you get the CDs and 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 such. Uh, uh, they said no, uh, or the floppy disk. They said no. He said we give them one copy, and then everything else is their cost. Okay, so Microsoft wasn't even willing to spend the money on the disk. Uh, even that they dumped on the PC makers, right? So that was the. It was even better than the syrup business. At least Coke has to provide syrup. In the case of Microsoft, they just provided the bits once, and then they charged you on the bits, which is why it's such a beautiful model. And Mr. Gates is the wealthiest person on the planet. Um, and um, and so it's very really funny. Like like he said, he he looked at me like I was dumb as a doorknob. He said, "What do you mean I'm going to send them CDs? No, I'm not going to send them CDs. I'm going to give them one 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 copy." And then he told me that once it got to streaming, we didn't even send them a copy. We just streamed it to them. You know, <laughs> not going to send them a single copy, right? And um, so in the case of Coke, it's not quite uh, uh, Microsoft. They still had to sell the syrup. But what they did is they came up with one more 
enhancement where they got to concentrate. So, the syrup had sugar in it. So, what they did is and it had water and what is the point of uh, you know uh, shipping these heavy things. So, they actually improved the model to just giving concentrate and telling the bottler add so much sugar and add so much water and now you got the concentrate uh, you got the syrup. So, they even took it down one level further. So, so you take the 25 cent can the Coca Cola can company gets about 7 cents. Uh, the cost on that is basically next to nothing it is sugared water uh, they are not even paying for the sugar and um, and the bulk of their uh, you know they spend about 10 percent of that on advertising and approximately about 25 or 30 percent of that number is uh, pre tax profits uh, you know so that is that is basically their uh, their model that is on the bottling side. Now, when you get to the fountain side things get even more exciting. Uh, so, when you go to a restaurant and you ask for a coke uh, you know they do not charge you 25 cents. What do they charge you Alex? Couple of bucks yeah. So, so you know that that 8 or 12 ounce serving is now 12 bucks. Uh, the Coca Cola company is giving it to the restaurant at probably I do not know 15 cents or something. And and they are very benevolent, and they let the restaurants make a lot of money on the cokes. And so what happens in that format is the restaurant loves coke. You know, is the highest volume, highest margin product of anything they're going to sell, right? And and people want it, and people ask for it by brand name, etc. Uh, like you know, the ones that don't offer coke and use and they have Pepsi, they have to they have to ask you. You know, would you uh, like a Pepsi instead? And you know, you kind of say, oh, okay, you know, it's fine. I'll take the Pepsi. Take a bullet for the team, um, and um, so uh, so the fountain sales model. If you think of the ecosystem, everyone makes money. You know, the restaurant makes a lot of money. The restaurant's very happy. The bottler that converts the concentrate to the syrup makes money. They're very happy because they deliver it. Uh, they do the last mile stuff, and the Coca Cola company is obviously very happy. So both these models uh, work uh, work really well. And you know, just to give you kind of a a sense of the capex differential uh, you know before they made the investment these numbers have gone up quite a bit since then but uh, but they sc in scale they're correct so the all the bottlers were spending in the mid 80s about 1.3 billion in capex every year and the coca cola company is spending 160 million you know approximately like 12% of what the bottlers were spending so uh, so most of the uh, most of the volume or uh, most of the benefit uh, of all of this went to the Coca Cola company. And then you know, you look at, you know, Warren has obsessed over the fact that there was, uh, you know, Branson had started Virgin Cola and then there was Sam's Choice and there were all these kind of private label type colas. And they studied that, and bottom line is that none of those ever got any traction. So, why didn't they get traction? Well, number one, you know, the personal space, the mouth, you know, you're not quite sure about Sam's Choice, even though you like Sam Walton. And um, and and the second is the economics; they can't really undercut. So, if you think about the twenty-five cent can, well, the reason it's at twenty-five cents is because of global scale. You know, this is a global company selling at a huge volume. I mean, they're buying aluminum at a huge volume. All those things, right? So, you try being even Walmart with whatever volumes Walmart has, and then you try to get customers to not buy Coke and buy Sam's Choice. How much can you undercut Coke by? The they they've got about two cents that they're making on that twenty-five cents as profit, and the bottler is probably making another couple of cents. So you've got about four cents. So once you go to if you had the exact same cost as a Coca-Cola company, if if you were at twenty-one cents and Coke was charging twenty-five cents, you would make no money, right? And if you didn't discount versus Coke, who would buy Sam's Choice? How many of you consume Sam's Choice? Does it even exist anymore? Does it exist anymore? I haven't. I've been to Walmart lately. Does Sam's Choice exist? Alex, you haven't kept up. No. All right. So, but in Costco, I don't remember. Maybe you guys know because I don't pay. That. Does Costco have a generic cola? Do they sell? No, I don't think so. Right? Do they have? Uh, so that's the that's the st that's is that the store brand? Yeah. So so, so they they've got some private label, but they got the big containers. Okay. Who 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 drinks refresh? 
Is it cheaper? And is it, do they have a cola? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you see that, so what, what they found is that if a competitor tried to come in and the store tried to do a private label or whatever else, they really couldn't undercut them because the economics just wouldn't allow it. So this is what, um, what they understood about Coke. Some of the things they understood about Coke when they read those annual reports.